then our main event, <laughs> singles match for the AEW World Championship, Hangman Adam Page against CM Punk. This is a match that is split the fan base, I think, right in half. This is a very unpredictable match here. Uh, I've told everyone for months on this show that I think it was Hangman running through this guy like a hot knife through butter. Um, I haven't seen anything that has made me change that. I would pretty much be really disappointed if if they did take the belt off of Hangman and put it on Punk here. Um, it feels like, you know, like hangman has become i think even for even those of us like myself who who had apprehensions about him before his championship reign like it's like he's like the the guy that's wearing the flag essentially for for the company that, that have, you know for day one and then you know punk comes in and ironically now <laughs> he's kind of the old guy like that you know quote unquote could be Standing in front of progress, uh, I think, and I think this is a lot of uh, you know this has been an interesting program from this from the standpoint of hate page showing some um, you know showing like kind of a more focused meaner tendencies and people you know he was willing to really call CM Punk out on that that Bret Hart stuff that people did not like um, so Heyman was willing to be a little edgy. Punk has said a lot of stuff about Heyman. They're doing matches where they're using each other's finishing moves terribly to beat other people. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that buckshot Larry hit looked abysmal. See him, Punk. <laughs> Don't think I wasn't going to get you. Don't Come on, man. I'm trying to drink some fucking water. What's wrong with you, man? Don't think I wasn't going to get gonna get you. And then Hangman was basically saying, I ain't no bitch. Like, and, you know, I, I fucks with Hangman. Like, and um, this is like the age-old philosophy. It's like the youth. Uh, it, it's like do, do your, hang, your, your baby face ace of the promotion or are you going to, you know, cash in, you know, the CM Punk title run. Um token right now and i don't think you need to do that personally like i don't think punk needs to win i think you know in in some circles you could call it a mistake if cm punk wins uh the championship here um i I think he needs to win it eventually but not necessarily now yeah so 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 what do you what do you think about this whole like like build and you know the split and everything going on with this I mean, I don't think there's, I don't really think there was much, there's been much there in the way of like personal animosity. Um, I did like the Hangman promo talking about like the Bret Hart cosplay. Uh, I did like CM Punk's promo where he's walking around the crowd talking about how like, you know, he, you know, he didn't know if he can make it here, he can hang anymore, but like he's here and he wants to show people like, I can still do this. Uh, I thought it was a cool promo. Um, I even like the part where, like, of late, Punk has like kind of healed himself in a way to be dismissive and that like he's like a like like he's big leaguing Page. Um, I like all of that. Um, am I in love with it? Not necessarily. Like, uh, if I could compare this to other things that were main evented um, AEW pay per views, I th- it's probably on the lower end of stuff as far as build and. And then, you know, investment and anticipation for the match coming. But um, I think they're going to have a really good match at the worst anyway. Um, And it could be more. And ultimately, as long as I get a clean finish, I'm good with either result, to be quite honest with you. Like, I think that I think that Punk, given what he's done in the company so far, um, could, you know, quote unquote, I don't mean like literal, literally command, but like has commanded like th- that kind of eyes, that kind of attention, that kind of stuff he did with MJF, like commands like a reward or not necessarily or kind of like an, a reward for like the level of um, of what he's done as a talker in, in the ring uh, coming back. But it's not that. but he has, you know, multiple years on his contract. This isn't the end. Um, so, it, but if they want to continue this thing and they really want to submit Adam Page as like, a guy for being this, you know, a, a two time champion down the line eventually. This is the match where, like, you give him that win and, and you move on. Like, you know, a lot of this year was about, like, um, 
in all of wrestling was like people got their big wins, their their wins to get them on the map, and it's like how do you sub- submit these people to where like they can have multiple runs in the future, or you can submit this person's like career. Like I'm, I'm mostly thinking like Kamatani and Shuri right now, and like with Paige, they've done that. They've done this work with him since he's won in November, and like if he if he wins this match, like. For me, he's he's for me he's fucking bulletproof. He's for me at this point, like he's undeniable at that already. But um, this puts it all the way over the top. Where it's like there ain't no fucking doubt that like this dude was like, like he's the fucking you know, man. Like <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so but either way, and I mean obviously that's that's a arbitrary crown type of thing or arbitrary crown type of moment. Like the business, the business. Like if Adam Page wins, like the company's not going to do better than if CM Punk's the champion, but that's not necessarily the point. The point is, like, well, this company has been, like, we have a bunch of guys that you all remember, and they're going to be doing some really interesting things, and along the way, they're going to title shot with somebody, and they're going to win or they're going to lose, but the main thing is to get the person that they're facing with, like, to up, another so, level. up to another level so where they can, you know, that's been the story of the promotion, by and large, for with Adam Page and the Pillars for since the beginning. This is another moment right here where it could, it, where we're going to see like in like more times than not, it's been to the betterment of the younger talent than the established guard. So, you know, I, you know, I, I wouldn't mind. It would be the worst thing in the world. There've been worse ideas for wrestling for Adam Page to beat CM Punk and then like face Adam pa- and then face Omega again. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate that. Right. <laughs> um. But there, there's really no bad decision because, like, I got to tell you, there's a whole lot of fucking money in a in a CM Punk uh, uh, Kenny Omega match down the line. So yeah, whatever they want to do, that's like we'll see how this goes. You know how they, how Kanye used to say stadium status, like. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I you know I'm Team Hayman on this one all the way. I I, I, I believe yeah. so much in like making this this ace run for him this okada like run for him um mm. to to really like i hate to say cement him right but it's like to drive it home to to make people mm-hmm. stop thinking like yo the next person is coming to beat this guy like it, it like the belt like you know there were some people that somehow convinced themselves that adam cole was going to beat him i a smart never <laughs> thought that at, at any point but I think from then on, it was almost like, well, you know, the, the the whispers that were around him, and there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of media that has gone around, like, perpetuating, like, you know, this man has been some type of awful champion just because he's not as featured or not as such of a strong personality uh, or things like well, that. But like, that part's true. That part's true about him not being a strong personality or talker, but who cares? Like... Not if, every fucking champion needs to be the Rocker John Cena. Yeah, I'm like, if, if, they, if they want fine. him to, open, if they want him to open with a 15 minute welcome to the show, uh, you know, order thing, like you know, and, and watch pro wrestling one way, the way they've watched it for the last 20 years. If they want that, cool. Hangman's not going to be your guy. But if you want to come with what AW is trying to do, like, and what they've like shown, right. like the, uh, you know, letting the champions kind of speak in their own image. Like we would see John Moxley sitting in a fucking hallway. You tell me doing that is like any more like necessarily important than <laughs> that. That's some, even, like, you know, he, he's, he's angrily not, yelling in a hallway. That's his championship <laughs> presence. Like, like in I, a vacuum, like I don't, that's just so superior to what Hangman's doing. Right. I, I, um, I I, can't, I think the thing for me is like this company has CM Punk, MJF, Eddie Kingston, Chris Jericho, John Moxley. If they needed somebody to carry the show from a talkish perspective, I could see that they're good. <laughs> They don't need another motherfucker that can go out there and talk for and talk for my, a, a long amount of time. They have enough guns that can do that already. This is wrestling. Well, obviously, y- you could say it. But I, I get the I get the need that you need to talk to get people emotionally invested in in your angles and your in in your matches or whatever else. I get all that, 
not everybody has to do it that way if you have a number of guys that can already do do enough of that work anyway. Like, you mean to tell me we need we really need uh, in the future we really need Hangman to come out here and give us a ten minute promo when you got when he's going to eventually face MJF? He probably has to cut two promos for that whole build up, and that shit's going to get one hundred and fifty fucking buys. It's fine, guys. Like, not everybody has to do this one particular skill. Some people get over, not everybody gets over the same way. He's somebody that got over with his matches and his story. He's made. It's that part's through with. Like, as far as, do you think he can get to another level if he does do that? Yeah, probably. But he's good right now where he is. Like, this company's not sinking with him, with him as a champion, contrary to some of these opinions that I think are <laughs> fucking wild. So, like, I think people need to gotta relax. Like, the sky's not always falling. I promise you it's not. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's interesting, man. Um, and thinking about CM Punk, this is his first title challenge. This should do... Like, you would think... Very well. Very it well. It should do well. Um, you know, will they have a better match in Paige and Takeshita? I don't think no, so. No. But... <laughs> No, <laughs> look, I would have no. just taken that, you know, as no one else made of it, but whatever, we're not here or there. But, um, this should be a, a very big match. CM Punk ain't never been the athlete to catch this. Hey, this is a seminal match in the promotions history, I think. And, uh, you start thinking about 2019, uh, 20, 21, now 22. No Cody on this show, no Kenny Omega via injury. Like, this is like, you know, there, there's, there's shit up for the taking if you want to go grab it. Um, so like there, there are, you know, are spots open, there are holes to fill, um, per se. So, and you know, there, there is like a, you know, a changing of the guard feeling, I think a lot on this card. Uh, you know, this is the first like pay-per-view really since they've started like kind of shedding or probably like, no, it started, uh, kind of last year, but we see more people starting to get shedded from their AW contracts. Um, Mm. and then like, you know, these people are being replaced.